Leo Szilard, Hungarian, Szilard Leo, German, Leo Spitz until age 2, February 11, 1898 May 30, 1964, was a Hungarian-American physicist and inventor. He conceived the nuclear chain reaction in 1933, patented the idea of a nuclear reactor with Enrico Fermi, and in late 1939 wrote the letter for Albert Einstein's signature that resulted in the Manhattan Project that built the atomic bomb. He also conceived the electron microscope. He conceived the linear accelerator, 1928, not knowing of Gustav Ising's prior 1924 journal article and Rolf Weider's operational device, and also the cyclotron. Szilard himself did not build all of these devices, or publish these ideas in scientific journals, and so credit for them often went to others. As a result, Szilard never received the Nobel Prize, but others were awarded the prize as a result of their work on two of his inventions. He was born in Budapest in the Kingdom of Hungary, and died in La Jolla, California. Szilard was born in 1898 to middle-class parents in Budapest, Hungary. His parents, both Jewish, Louis Spitz, a civil engineer, and Thekla Vidor, raised Leo on the Veros Legeti Phaser in Pest, Hungary. Despite having a religious background, he later became an agnostic. From 1908-1916 Leo attended Realiskola High School in his hometown. Showing an early interest in physics and a proficiency in mathematics, in 1916 took the Eovos Prize, a national prize for mathematics. He enrolled as an engineering student at Budapest Technical University in 1916. The following year the Austro-Hungarian army drafted him as an officer candidate. Prior to his regiment being sent to the front lines, Szilard fell ill with Spanish influenza and he was returned home for hospitalization. Later he was informed that his regiment had been nearly annihilated in battle, so the sickness probably saved his life. He was discharged honorably at the end of the war. In 1919 he resumed engineering studies at Budapest Technical University but soon decided to leave Hungary due to the chaotic political situation in Hungary following the First World War. Szilard continued engineering studies at Technisk Hochschule, Institute of Technology, in berlin Charlottenburg. He soon changed to physics there and took physics classes from Einstein, Planck and Max von Law. His dissertation on thermodynamics über die thermodynamischen Schwankungserscheinungen, on the manifestation of thermodynamic fluctuations, praised by Einstein, won top honors in 1922. In 1923 he was awarded a doctorate in physics from Humboldt University of Berlin. He was appointed as assistant to von Law at the University of Berlin's Institute for Theoretical Physics in 1924. In 1927 he finished his habilitation and became a privatdozent, private lecturer, in physics at University of Berlin. Throughout his time in Berlin he worked on numerous technical inventions. For example, in 1928 he submitted a patent application for the linear accelerator and, in 1929, he applied for a patent for the cyclotron. During the 1926-1930 period, he worked with Einstein to develop a refrigerator, notable because it had no moving parts. Szilard's 1929 paper, Über die Entropie ever Minderung in einem thermodynamischen System bei in Griffen intelligenter Wesen, on the reduction of entropy in a thermodynamic system by the intervention of intelligent beings, introduced the thought experiment now called Szilard's engine and became important in the history of attempts to understand Maxwell's demon. This work also is the first equation of negative entropy and information. As such, it established Szilard as one of the founders of information theory. The father of information theory is usually considered to be Claude Shannon. He was the first to define the bit of information as widely used today. The term bit was first used by Claude Shannon who said it was coined by John Tukey. Szilard went to London in 1933 where he read an article in the Times summarizing a speech given by Ernest Rutherford in which he rejected the feasibility of using atomic energy for practical purposes. Rutherford's speech remarked specifically on the recent 1932 work of his students, John Cockcroft and Ernest Walton, in splitting lithium into alpha particles, 
by bombardment with protons from a particle accelerator they had constructed. We might in these processes obtain very much more energy than the proton supplied, but on the average we could not expect to obtain energy in this way. It was a very poor and inefficient way of producing energy, and anyone who looked for a source of power in the transformation of the atoms was talking moonshine. But the subject was scientifically interesting because it gave insight into the atoms. Although the atom had been split and energy released, nuclear fission had not yet been discovered. Szilard was reportedly so annoyed at Rutherford's dismissal that when his speech was published, Szilard conceived of the idea of nuclear chain reaction, analogous to a chemical chain reaction, using recently discovered neutrons. The idea did not use the mechanism of nuclear fission, which was not then known, but Szilard realized that if neutrons could initiate any sort of energy-producing nuclear reaction, such as the one that had occurred in lithium, and could be produced themselves by the same reaction, energy might be obtained with little input, since the reaction would be self-sustaining. The following year he filed for a patent on the concept of the neutron-induced nuclear chain reaction. Richard Rhodes described Szilard's moment of inspiration. In London, where Southampton Row passes Russell Square, across from the British Museum in Bloomsbury, Leo Szilard waited irritably one grey depression morning for the stoplight to change. A trace of rain had fallen during the night, Tuesday, September 12, 1933, dawned cool, humid and dull. Drizzling rain would begin again in early afternoon. When Szilard told the story later he never mentioned his destination that morning. He may have had none, he often walked to think. In any case another destination intervened. The stoplight changed to green. Szilard stepped off the curb. As he crossed the street time cracked open before him and he saw a way to the future, death into the world and all our woes, the shape of things to come. Szilard first attempted to create a nuclear chain reaction using beryllium and indium, but these elements did not produce a chain reaction. In 1936, he assigned a chain reaction patent to the British Admiralty to ensure its secrecy, GB 630,726. Szilard also was the CO holder, with Nobel laureate Enrico Fermi, of the patent on the nuclear reactor, US patent 2,708,656. In 1938 Szilard accepted an offer to conduct research at Columbia University in Manhattan, and moved to New York, and was soon joined by Fermi. After learning about the successful nuclear fission experiment conducted in 1939 in Germany by Otto Hahn, Fritz Strassmann, Lisa Meitner, and Otto Robert Frisch, Szilard and Fermi concluded that uranium would be the element capable of sustaining a chain reaction. Szilard and Fermi conducted a simple experiment at Columbia and discovered significant neutron multiplication in uranium, proving that the chain reaction was possible and enabling nuclear weapons. Szilard later described the event, we turned the switch and saw the flashes. We watched them for a little while and then we switched everything off and went home. He understood the implications and consequences of this discovery, though. That night, there was very little doubt in my mind that the world was headed for grief. At around that time the Germans and others were in a race to produce a nuclear chain reaction. German attempts to control the chain reaction sought to do so using graphite, but these attempts proved unsuccessful. Szilard realized graphite was indeed perfect for controlling chain reactions, just as the Germans had determined, but that the German method of producing graphite used boron carbide rods, and the minute amount of boron impurities in the manufactured graphite was enough to stop the chain reaction. Szilard had graphite manufacturers produce boron-free graphite. As a result, the first human-controlled chain reaction occurred on December 2, 1942-16. The Manhattan Project Fifteen people all wearing formal suit jackets, with Szilard also wearing a lab coat. The Metallurgical Laboratory Scientists, with Szilard third from right. Szilard was directly responsible for the creation of the Manhattan Project. He drafted a confidential letter to Franklin D. Roosevelt explaining the possibility of nuclear weapons, 
warning of Nazi work on such weapons and encouraging the development of a program which could result in their creation. In August, 1939 he approached his old friend and collaborator Albert Einstein and convinced him to sign the letter, lending his fame to the proposal. The Einstein-Sillard letter resulted in the establishment of research into nuclear fission by the U.S. government and ultimately to the creation of the Manhattan Project, FDR gave the letter to an aide, General Edwin M. Pa Watson with the instruction, Pa, this requires action. Later, Sillard relocated to the University of Chicago to continue work on the project. There, along with Fermi, he helped to construct the first neutronic reactor, a uranium and graphite atomic pile in which the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction was achieved in 1942. As the war continued, Sillard became increasingly dismayed that scientists were losing control of their research to the military, and argued many times with General Leslie Groves, military director of the project. His resentment towards the U.S. government was exacerbated by his failure to prevent the destructive use of the atomic bomb through having a test explosion that could be witnessed by Japanese observers who would then have the opportunity to surrender and spare lives. Sillard became a naturalized citizen of the United States in 1943. Views on the use of nuclear weapons In 1932, Sillard read the science fiction novel The World Set Free by H.G. Wells, a book which he said made a great impression on him. As a scientist, he was the first person to conceive of a device that, using a nuclear chain reaction as fuel, could be used as a bomb. As a survivor of the political and economic devastation in Hungary following World War I, which had been eviscerated by the Treaty of Trianon, Szilard developed an enduring passion for the preservation of human life and freedom, especially freedom to communicate ideas. He hoped that the U.S. government would not use nuclear weapons because of their potential for use against civilian populations. Szilard hoped that the mere threat of such weapons would force Germany and Slash or Japan to surrender. He also worried about the long-term implications of the usage of nuclear weapons, predicting that their usage by the United States would start a nuclear arms race with Russia. He drafted the Sillard petition advocating demonstration of the atomic bomb. However with the European war concluded and the U.S. suffering many casualties in the Pacific Ocean region, the new U.S. President Harry Truman agreed with advisors and chose to use atomic bombs against Hiroshima and Nagasaki over the protestations of Sillard and other scientists. After the war, Sillard and Norman Hilbury at the site of CP1, at the University of Chicago, some years after the war. In 1947, Sillard switched his field of study from physics to molecular biology, working extensively with Aaron Novick. The change is widely credited to his recoil at the horror of atomic weapons but it was, at least in part, because he was dismissed from the Manhattan Project by its military head, Jen Leslie Groves, who suspected him of having Russian sympathies. This fear that he was a security risk subsequently prevented him from getting any work on nuclear-related projects. In his new field, he gave essential advice to Theodore Puck and Philip I. Marcus for their first cloning of a human cell in 1955. In February 1950 Sillard proposed a cobalt bomb, a new kind of nuclear weapon using cobalt as a tamper, which he said might destroy all life on the planet. U.S. News and World Report featured an interview with Sillard in its August 15, 1960 issue, President Truman didn't understand. He argued that violence would not have been necessary if we had been willing to negotiate. In 1961 Sillard published a book of short stories, The Voice of the Dolphins, in which he dealt with the moral and ethical issues raised by the Cold War and his own role in the development of atomic weapons. The title story described an international biology research laboratory in Central Europe. This became reality after a meeting in 1962 with Victor F. Weisskopf, James Watson, and John Kendrew. When the European Molecular Biology Laboratory was established, the library was named the Sillard Library and the library stamp features dolphins. Sillard married Gertrude Weiss in 1951. In 1960, Sillard was diagnosed with bladder cancer. 
he underwent cobalt therapy at New York's Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital using a cobalt-60 treatment regimen that he designed himself. He was familiar with the properties of this isotope from his work on the cobalt bomb. A second round of treatment with an increased dose followed in 1962. The doctors tried to tell him that the increased radiation dose would kill him, but he said it wouldn't, and that anyway he would die without it. The higher dose did its job and his cancer never returned. This treatment became standard for many cancers and is still used. In 1962, Szilard was part of a group of scientists who founded the Council for a Livable World. The Council's goal was to warn the public and Congress of the threat of nuclear war and encourage rational arms control and nuclear disarmament. He spent his last years as a fellow of the Salk Institute in San Diego alongside his old friend Jacob Bernowski. In May 1964, Szilard died in his sleep of a heart attack at the age of 66. In February 2014, the UCSD Library announced that they received grant funding from the National Historical Publications and Records Commission NHPRC, to digitize its collection of Szilard's papers, extending from 1938 to 1998.